Jesus promises in his last words to the disciples, hey guys, you're gonna be hated. Oh, super cool, awesome, that's really encouraging, thanks. He talks about the fact that there's gonna be grief, there's gonna be pain, there's gonna be loss. And boy, was that true, there was. In fact, to date, researchers tell us 90 million Christians have died as martyrs for their belief in Jesus. In fact, they're saying now 90,000 Christians in the world are dying every year, and a Christian dies every six minutes for their faith right now on earth. He was right. There would be hate, there would be grief, and there would be loss. We can talk more about that. Maybe you're watching this going, you just told me not to despair, and now you told me people are dying. They, they, they are. This is life and death. Oftentimes, people think about church home and what we're doing. It's like, oh, that's a cute concept and nice content. and hope you guys are helping people. I, I, I'd like to appeal just for a moment. It's much, much more than that. People all over the world are dying every day. There are wars and rumors of wars, disease, pestilence, pandemics, pain, loss, and challenges. What we're endeavoring to do here at Church Home is to play our part to be an antidote and an answer and a part of the solution. The invitation is clear, isn't it? Even as Jesus invites his disciples, so he invites us into a lifestyle that does not guarantee always our perfect, comfortable, convenient life. He invites us. So I warn you, I really do. You want to investigate the last words of Jesus to his disciples. Some of them are weighty and overwhelming, but let me encourage you. Later in John 17, Jesus says, you're going to have pain. You're going to have grief. You're going to, grief, you're going to have loss. And then he says, it's a lot like a woman who gives birth. And after nine months, typically, she gives birth. But here's what I've never heard a mother say after birthing a child. And I've met a few, and I'm married to one and we've had three kids. And that is after the extraordinary, long, laborious nine months, and then all the pain to get the baby out, I've never heard a mom say, well, that certainly wasn't worth it. In fact, just the opposite. Seems every mom on earth says, wow, look at the child. That was worth it. And why is that important? Well, because in the last conversation, Jesus says, a lot of the pain and grief you're going through is a lot like a woman giving birth, but the results are gonna be so overwhelming, you'll almost forget about the pain that you're going through. Interesting fact, when you look at the book of Job, much is made of the book of Job, and everyone says how bad Job's life is. Do you know Job lived 140 years, and the real bad parts of Job's life, we believe, are only nine months? Isn't that interesting? Nine months the exact amount of time for a child to mature in a woman's womb. So Job is a portrait of the same grief. And what's the message of Jesus? Nine months isn't your whole story. There are going to be extended seasons where you are in pain. And there is loss and there is pandemics. And there is upheaval and there is unrest. Maybe there's a lack of clarity and understanding of what is going on in the world. But I promise you, as Jesus promised his disciples in his last words, that once that thing is birthed in your life, I believe your conclusion will be, it was worth it. Judah, is God birthing something through the pandemic? I can't say that. I'm not even gonna stand here and say that God is the source of disease and pandemic, of course not but there are calamities and there's free will set in motion on earth. It is a result, creates challenges, problems, and pains, but God works them together for our good. And like a woman giving birth and the first cry of a baby, there is elation, joy, fulfillment, and satisfaction at the reality that this beautiful baby has been born. I also want to set the record straight. Everybody's like, I don't want to be Job, really? You want nine tough months and 140 great years? Now, he lost a lot of loved ones, a lot of people he loves, and so I won't get into that and digress, but grand scheme, big picture, Job lived 140 years and nine months were hard. I just believe you're going through a season. I believe even as a world, we're going through a season. One of our passions is to connect, anchor ourselves again to the words of Jesus, which in fact give us hope. Don't despair. Your life is in fact 
more than nine months. Let me say that again. Don't despair. Your life is far more than nine months. Last thing I want to say in John 17, Jesus speaks of something so profound. He speaks of this idea of glory. Glory is spoken of in scripture 247 times, depending on what translation you read. It is a paramount topic in scripture. And he says he would share his glory with us. Now there's more to the definition of glory, but at its essence, glory is the weight of God. And I wanna say this, as we begin the study of this series, I wanna remind you, I don't believe you have to despair. I believe you can give your despair to God. God in a matter of a few short years can do the unthinkable, the unimaginable through your life. A relatively unknown rabbi who had traveled no more than 140 miles in his lifetime has changed the world as we know it. And he is still doing that today. Never despair. Secondly, I want you to be reminded today, your life is more than nine months. Nine months is not your whole story. This pandemic is not your whole story. These injustices are not your whole story. This loss is not your whole story. Divorce is not your whole story. Bankruptcy is not your whole story. Cancer is not your whole story. There's more to you than the season you're going through. 